Hi, welcome to this my second tutorial on domains and ranges of functions. Now in this tutorial what I want to do is look at square root functions and reciprocal functions. And the first one we've got here is g of x equals the square root of x. Now if we had to state the domain of this function and the range of the function, what I always like doing is drawing a sketch of the graph. So if we start then by looking at the graph, we've got our x-axis and if I assume that y equals g of x then the square root of x, remember this is just the plus the square root of x, would be a graph that would look something like this. Square root of naught is naught and it would come up through here and go off like that. Typical values on this curve would be that if x was say 4 we would have 2, the square root of 4 is 2 and if x was say 9 the square root of 9 would be 3 and if x was 16 the square root of 16, 4 and so on. So you get a curve looking like this. So what is the domain? Well the domain remember is the set of x values that you can put into this function and get results out. And those values of x that you can put into that function go from 0 all the way down through here. You cannot put any of these x values in, any of these negative values. Why? Because you couldn't square root a negative number. So the graph shows us then that the domain extends all along the x-axis and would keep going forever and ever. So we need to write the domain then as being, let's just write domain is such that x is any value greater than or equal to zero. Alright, when it comes to the range, what would the range be? Well, the range is the set of corresponding y values that we get out when we put any of these x values through the function. And so those y values extend up the y-axis from 0 all the way up, forever and ever. So we can say that those y values, which we're calling g of x, are values that are greater than or equal to 0. And that's our range for this function. However, if we restricted the domain, let's say we took the same function, g of x equals square root of x, but we restricted the domain to be, say, x is greater than or equal to 4, but less than 25. Let's just draw some axes. like so. And we're looking at sketching it between say 4, x is 4, and 25. Now the x-axis isn't drawn to scale but uh, it's just to illustrate the point. So when we put 4 through the function, square root of 4 is 2, so we can see that this value, let's suppose this value is 2, when we put 25 through, square root of 25 would be 5. So we'll assume that that point up there, say, is 5. So the curve, normally, for the square root of x, would have been something like this. But we're picking it up from here through to, say, there. So what is the domain? Well, the domain is given anyway, so we've got that, the domain has been restricted to x as being greater than or equal to 4 but less than 25. But what about the range? Well the range is the set of corresponding y values when you put any value greater than or equal to 4 through the function but less than 25. So these would be these particular values. And so we've got 2 because we know that when you put 4 in you will get 2, 
Okay, so the lowest value for g of x okay, will be 2. So we've got that it can equal 2. But we're not actually putting 25 into the function. If we did, we'd get 5. But we're putting values just less than 25. So what we're going to get is values just less than 5. So we must put that this is less than 5. And there you have the range. All right, so when you're dealing with square root functions, make sure you remember that you cannot square root any negative numbers, and that is going to restrict your domain. Okay, well now what I want to do is show you how we handle reciprocal functions. Now if we're given this particular function, h of x equals 3 over x minus 1, and asked to state the domain and range, then again we'd need to think of the graph. So we'll just sketch it out over here. So we've got the axes. Now, when you're dealing with reciprocal functions and the x is in the denominator here, what you've got to remember is that you cannot divide by 0. So in fact, x cannot be 1 because you'd have 1 take away 1 is 0. If you divide by 0, you get an undefined result. Now to sketch this particular function, what I always think of is the reciprocal function 1 over x, which would be a graph looking something like this. It would come around like this. The curve wouldn't touch the y-axis and it wouldn't touch the x-axis and it would also come down around like this. Okay. And then what we're doing is stretching that graph, we're multiplying by 3, so it's still going to basically have that kind of same shape there and there. But then I'm subtracting 1 from x, and what that's going to cause the graph to do is shift one unit to the right. So what I've got here is what we call an asymptote. Okay, and I'll just mark that here, and that value on the x-axis is the value x equals 1. And so what would happen is that this graph would look something like this. Okay, Not touching this line here and not touching the x-axis. And it will come through here and drop down like that. Okay, So what is the domain? Well, we can see from the graph, I hope, that the domain is all the x values that you can put into this particular function. Now you can put all the x values going in this direction from 1 into the function and all the x values going out in this direction forever and ever Okay, that are less than 1. But you cannot put the value x equals 1 into the function because you get this undefined result because you're dividing by 0. So we describe the domain as x can be any real value okay, except the 1 here. So we tend to write x not equal to 1. All right? Now when it comes to the range, remember the range is the set of y values that correspond to putting any value of x from the domain into the function. So when I put any of these values of x into the function you could read off the corresponding values of y. And so if I put any of these x values that are greater than 1 into the function you can see that I get all of these y values up here. They go from just above 0 all the way up forever and ever. And when I put these values of x that are less than 1 through the function, what I get back is any of these y values down here that are less than 0. So in other words, the range, which is given by h of x, okay, h of x is again any real number except 0. So we say that h of x cannot equal 0. Alright? 
Okay, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial and I hope you've been able to follow my examples and uh, we'll use possibly a similar technique by sketching the graphs and being able to read from the graphs your domain and range.